in the Chicago area, U.S. Uh, this is actually a TIS paper published in uh, uh, last year. So this is actually extended version of the short paper that I have presented two years ago at IUI here, 2017. So I'm really glad that I can represent my work here in the same conference. So this is about human in the loop. Oh, I'm going to start my clock. This is a work about interactive system for uh, sound event detection and annotations. I'm going to start with talking about uh, what sound event detection means and why do we need, need that. So there are some research areas that re actually require a lot of sound event annotations to quantify sound event to understand the context. For example, uh, some ecologists might need to want to find uh, bird singing in nature recordings. And also some language pathologists want to search for a certain type of sound event that might affect children's language development. So what kind of sound event, how long those sound event kids are exposed during the day. Or another application, it might be for a machine learning practitioner. So unless you can easily uh, download the data set from the web, if you want to build your own machine learning model for audio, you have to collect data first. So take your own recording, you have to cut and label them to train your own model. So this data labeling process is, is really important and painful uh, uh, process within this uh, machine learning pipeline. Okay, then this is important, but how do people usually do sound annotations? Uh, one of the typical way and simplest way of doing that is manual annotations. There are a lot of interfaces that support these manual annotations. You can load it up your audio track and you can uh, select some reasons. So you have audio file here and listen to the audio and find some interesting sound that you want to find more regions containing uh, sound events that are similar to the sound event you just found. So you can continue to listen to the sound and find another one and find another one. The problem is what if this sound file is extremely long, like hours, and depending on your application, it could be days of sound event. So this is extremely expensive uh, a task. Okay, then someone might ask me, why not using automated system? There are a lot of research paper about machine learning model for audio recognitions. But my argument here is I cannot use that. There's uh, some reason because I'm a just domain expert. Uh, what, I, what I mean by domain expert is I'm just a language pathologist, ecologist. I have no knowledge on machine learning and audio signal processing. Then I can ask someone who had that knowledge to, lay, to, to build a model for me. But the problem is I just found an interesting sound event while I'm listening to my own recording. So then how do I collect that many training examples? of that, that particular sound classes. Sometimes I don't even know how to search for it on the web. Most importantly, depending on your application, I really need a ground truth level labeling. I don't want to want my machine to make some mistakes on my labeling for my research. So for this reason, I cannot use automated system. So I will do it manually. But it would be really great if I have some interface that somehow speeds up my manual annotation process to get the ground truth level of labeling. And it should not require any knowledge of a machine learning and signal processing. So I propose this approach, interactive uh, detection and annotation, since machine, even if machine is not accurate, uh, it can somehow suggest some reason containing a particular sound event that machine thinks it has target sound quickly. Then human can be reviewed, can review those suggestions and label it. And those labeling process also can be fed into the uh, machine back to as a user feedback to update the machine's uh, prediction for the next round. So this is pr pretty uh, iterative process of detection annotation. So before getting into the actual system, I, I want to point out that there are two different goals of using machine labeling. So for automated system, their goal is to build an accurate model. Basically, they try to replace the human annotator. So human trained machine learning model and this machine automatically label the sound event for me. But this, is, this proposal work is the final output is not the accurate model. I'm more interested in just getting this annotation done quickly with the help of the machine. So how I evaluate this system should be different from this research area, actually. Oh. So this is system overview. So actually, I'm not, I'm not going to go detail especially for audio-specific technique here, because it's an IUI conference. Uh, OK, so first, the user have audio file and define a target sound. 
the, of their interest. Or if we, they have some separate sound file to submit, they can submit to the system. Then system does segmentations, so split those long audio files into small chunk of audio whose length is exactly the same as the first sound event you found, and then do some feature extractions. Here, you can use some uh, uh, a classic uh, handcraft feature, or you can use some deep learning based feature embeddings. So whatever feature expression you use, each segment can be represented as a feature vector so, th so that you can measure distance between segments in the fixed length of feature space. After that, a uh, machine picked and closed the region and highly likely reasons to the first initial target sound to be reviewed by a user. The user listened to each suggestions, say, uh, machine say, hey, there is a four suggestions, then listen to those. Then. And user can listen to each of that. There's a couple of different scenarios. The so user listen to each segment and say, oh, there's no target sound, so kind of negative feedback. Uh, there is a target sound, so positive feedback. There's another situation where, since I have just a fixed length of segment, there's some situation where it has a target sound, but the segmentation could be a bit incorrect. So in this case, you can adjust those suggested, the boundary of suggested reason, like this. Then after you uh, review all the segment, you can submit this result to, to the system as your feedback. If you do that, what would happen here is, there's some uh, gray sections that you implicitly confirm that there is no target sound. So system actually labeled this uh, section as, as negative automatically. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven labeled examples after this round. Then after that, you submit your, your labels to the system and it update the feature space based on the set of positive examples, set of negative examples, and uh, recompute the uh, relevant score for unlabeled examples. So you keep iterating doing this. So this slide illustrate how the system works. Um, so again, user select a target sound, then label as positive, and system split this long audio file into fixed length of segment, whose this length is exactly the same as the first segment. Then you do the fixed attractions and map those unlabeled example into fixed length of feature space. And for now, let's say machine suggests uh, three reasons that is close to the positive examples. Then user listen to these reasons, say there's a positive, negative event, and you submitted that, and the feature space is re-rated based on that. And again, three more reasons suggested, and label it. So actually, this is really ideal case. Actually, uh, real world, the system might not work it this way, but I'm going to just show you how this backend works. So since we've seen how it works in backend, it's time to look at the front end. So this is interface. So now I have audio file. Oh. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Okay. So this is an audio file recorded in office environment. So it has a bunch of keyboard typing sound, some speech sound, uh, human laughing sound. So you can, if you find interesting sound event, you can just select those reason as an initial target sound. Or if you have one separate audio file, you can submit So let's say I select this sound file. Some sound of closing drawer, and you click to find a similar reason, then it suggests you five candidates that you can listen to it. So if it has target sound, you can, it doesn't have target sound, but let's say it has target sound. It's a positive, <laughs> negative. <laughs> negative. 
Oh, yeah. Have you? It has some uh, drawing closing sound. Or you can adjust the boundary like this and move around here. If you click the find similar reason again, this five label example is submitted to the system and you will get uh, another five new reasons next round. And here you can review what you labeled here. Okay, that was front end. So we did some evaluation on this system. Uh, so we invited 20 participants who might be a potential user of this interface. So we, compare, we gave them uh, two interface, interactive tool and a manual annotation tool. And that the task was they're given 12 minute long audio file has uh, 11 different sound classes and there are 18 different 18 example, sound event example per class. So the task was to find as many door knock sound as possible. The other task was find as many human speech uh, sound as possible. So which interface actually enabled the participant to label given audio faster? That was the question that I really wanted to answer. This is a result. Um, so blue line is for interactive one, green line is a manual one. So if you look at the graph, uh, it took slightly more than 300 seconds to find 80% of sound events. So now recall 0.8. But if you use interactive one, it took uh, more than 700 seconds to achieve the same recall value. So roughly twice faster. Uh, if you use uh, interactive one. Okay, so that was the result, but we uh, actually try to analyze this result a bit more detail. So we wanted to know that what factor actually improved this performance? What factor actually made this graph interactive one to this inter uh, manual one to this interactive one? So obviously looking back to the, the figure we saw before. Um, obviously, since interactive one has a machine, this is obvious factor, positive impact of uh, effect. So since we have fast, accurate machine suggestions, using interactive annotation uh, can boost the performance. But we found that after reviewing uh, log data from our experiment and a user's review, there is some negative impact on this interaction, my interactive annotation tool. There is interaction overhead. So if you use a manual annotation, you can just play the audio and every time you find interesting sound event, you can just stop it and label it. But if you use interactive annotation, you have to go through this complicated whole interaction uh, 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 flow. So if you listen to the new suggested reason, and if it has a target, it doesn't have a target sound, you have to click negative button, as you saw in, in, in front end demo, and you make, until you make sure all the uh, label segment is uh, labeled, you have to go through this loop. If it has target sound, also you have to check that whether this segmentation is correct. So you have to adjust those suggested boundary until that reason cover whole sound event. So you adjust boundary and listen again, adjust boundary, listen again, so because of this interaction overhead, there's some negative impact on that. So for thinking about future work, uh, how can we speed up this annotation even further? So there's a positive impact from a machine suggestion, negative impact uh, interaction overhead. Definitely if you have a powerful machine, I can speed up this further. Also you can simple interface, I can, annotate, I can speed up this annotation even further. So next question we asked was, okay then, relatively easier to come up with a better like feature extraction method, a better model because we can simply plug in those uh, model into the interface than redesigning all the interaction. And also this is easier to uh, evaluate or, or quantify this, this effect, but it's not easy to quantify this interaction overhead. So we try to quantify this interaction overhead to analyze our result a lot more. So we go back to the log data we got from the experiment. So this graph it shows that for one single participant, how long it took a participant to evaluate fixed amount of audio. So now, so now you have, so using linear manual annotation to verify 200 seconds of audio, you actually spend 200, a little bit more, 200 seconds. It's kind of reasonable, right? It's a manual annotation. But if you use an interactive one, 
two, listen to 200 seconds of audio, actually it took 800 seconds of it. It took a really long time. So as you see, there's two different slope here. So interactive has much more uh, greater slope than manual. So we compute the interaction overhead by computing this ratio, 3.62. So we did this for our entire uh, participant data. Then we got this number, 4.68 says this is kind of interaction, mean interaction overhead of our interface. Then how can we use that number? Uh, we can actually estimate actual uh, user performance only using Oracle simulation result by applying that number. So this is a uh, result only using Oracle simulation, using the, the same feature instruction method and search system. So this is not ideal because the it does not consider any user interaction overhead. So I multiply that number we got from the previous slide to make this more realistic like this. So we confirmed that this new, this estimation is kind of similar to actual our, uh, uh, the graph that we got from our user study. So using this uh, a number, we can estimate user performance given like different machine learning model, different uh, feature extraction, searching technique without additional user study. So this is kind of new approach for sound event annotation and our interface was roughly twice as fast as manual annotations. And I didn't show you, but we also did some survey and most participants were satisfied with the, the using the interface. So uh, actually, if, if you can go to this website, there's a, a demo video and also the link to the actual working a demo. So you can try the demo. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Any questions? Um, many thanks. Extremely interesting work. Um, something, but something I wondered about is, um, let's assume I'm interested in birds. I have this, I'm interested in birds. Mm -hmm. Uh, animals. Um, so I listen to. So I start listening, and then I select a seagull, and then the system proposed me more sound snippets, and some of them are seagulls, some are not. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other birds in the sound file, but I will never discover them because the system, so I would assume the system will soon be biased uh, towards seagulls. Um, and, and because it proposes me new, new sound snippets, mm -hmm. um, and if there's like never another bird in it, I will never say, oh, this is a positive example. So isn't that a problem that you might end up with, that you have a biased, biased ground meaning, truth because I never listen to the entire audio file? Bias meaning uh, like you never recommend other type of birds. So here, my assumption is, is it only for kind of like finding one type of sound event, not multi-classes? So if you want to find seagull sound first, then you first keep collecting on the seagull sound from like first iteration of that. So that's one of the weakness. So if you want to find, collect different type of sound, bird sound at the same time, then you ha we have to add more like features or interactions that you can collect multiple uh, sound events. In that case, we have to have multiple feature extraction methods, different uh, multiple uh, uh, search engines in, in, in the uh, system. Yeah, yeah. Given on this interface, I have to let user know that you have to, you can only collect one type of sound event. Yeah, that that's kind of one weakness, I think. Yeah. So good work. Um, given that you are collecting the target data, I mean target audio, like you're asking user to uh, pick the target audio or provide it to the system. Uh, I know there are a number of uh, algorithms that measures the similarity between uh, two audio files, like audio fingerprinting, or you can just use regular sequence uh, comparison for measuring similarity. I'm just not seeing uh, why the human interaction is necessary to achieve this specific task. It looks like audio fingerprinting kind of algorithm will give you enough accuracy over 
uh, this system. Here, here, I'm not going for enough accuracy. I'm going for perfect accuracy. So as a, as a, a domain expert, I really want to verify every single uh, sound event that I need to uh, label. So I don't want to have even a small chance that my machine made mistakes. So that's why I have this, this system. So we can define this as a like kind of high recall retrieval. Let's thank the speaker again. We have to move on. <laughs> Sorry.